You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 17th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have named Lagavulin, Oban, and Kendall Jackson Chardonnay as our impeachment managers, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. It's the Drift Glass and Blue Gal podcast. Happy anniversary! anybody wants <laughs> bars open, <laughs> bars the, the open. Bar, and, and, and weed is now legal in illinois so the bar is really open uh-huh. so you know just bring enough for everyone that's all we have <laughs> oh boy well we don't want well, we don't want to uh leave out anyone who's in no. recovery either because um, right we certainly have seen our share of uh, alcohol abuse on the Republican side this week. We so, oh god yeah. Uh, we'll oh, get to yeah. that in a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, happy tenth anniversary, Drift Glass. Let's start with happy, the happy news. Happy tenth anniversary. It's, it's, I still have the the um the futon <laughs> in the garage where this all began. Yeah, we we started talking about having a podcast in when we were in Chicago for a summer. Yeah. Yeah, and hanging out, hanging out, know? just hanging out. We were just hanging, hanging out. out, and who knows? Who knows how this is going to end? Yeah, no, ah. it's a great idea. Let's try a podcast because nobody had a podcast. It was, right. it was, uh, it was the new territory, and now there are many large uh, podcast networks, uh, liberal podcast networks, who are celebrating variously their third anniversary or their four month anniversary or something like that, which are all great. Uh, but we had the feeling that we should be talking to you directly as a supplement to our our writing, which had already been going on for you and I for five years at that point. And I had been doing Um, a video blog for a while. I don't have that anymore, but. uh, And a salon. You conducted a salon. I did a salon online, which was chat room. Early adopter. That's what we did. And uh, we we had fun with it. here we are. Yeah. We had a hard time with keeping it to 30 minutes. Right. At the beginning. That was kind of (laughs) cute. That's adorable. Like, well, can we go 90 minutes today? No, we can't. No, Sorry. No. Your sound and, editor uh, will lose her mind. And we also have a little side hustle called the uh, Science Fiction University that we're still doing. Once a month, we're going to put out a Once Science a Fiction University show. Yes, we are. So and, this is. Uh, that's going on. Is, and, so go look for that at wherever you get your podcasts. So we have you writing and video editing and sound editing and podcasting, two different podcasts and working full time for Crooks and Liars and me freelancing and doing my stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A reminder, just in case you're wondering, it's just us. It's just (laughs) us. There's no staff. There's no intern. There's no research assistant. There's nobody cutting this together at the end of the day other than my beautiful wife who exhausts herself every Friday. And I mean, literally every Friday for the past 10 years yeah. to put together um, an hour podcast, which we love doing. We love doing. We, 10 years later, we still love doing this. But I do flop on uh, the couch with a glass of wine once the show yeah. is posted. I want you yeah. guys to know. <laughs> and, uh, we do have a ritual. She gets a, uh, a hot cup of uh, lemon lift tea. Once we're done recording, um, I get lemon lift tea. Yes. And then everyone is, I put up the police cones uh, around you her. Do. Like, and say, leave mom Don't alone. Don't anyone leave, leave mom alone. <laughs> And uh, so then you get whatever you want, whatever you want me to cook or whatever you want me to retrieve from the sleety ice storm we're having it outside is the, right now. It is the mom's choice for dinner. I get whatever I want for dinner. Whatever, yeah. Usually whatever it's Chinese, want. but yeah. Well, and since this is our 10th anniversary show, yeah. Uh, in addition to thanking our amazing listeners, both old and new, for their support and their kind words and et cetera, and our wonderful angel nerd, Tammy, who built us our digital home yep. and to whom we owe a great debt of gratitude. We would like to thank our many fake sponsors who have carried us throughout the years. So I know we have no music for this because it just makes me cry. But <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank MacGuffin's Muffins, who build strong plot points 12 ways. Uh, Dukakis Khakis, Mike Dukakis' line of sensible men's pants for senseless times. Croc Blockers, hey man, don't wear those shoes. Hello Fascist, the Republican at-home meal delivery service. 
We're the good Lord Splitcha, emergency farewell party planners. Fifth column vodka, it takes the sting out of being occupied. The Heritage Foundation Transmission Repair Shop. This is a very short-lived but exciting uh, ad, ad, uh, ad buy we had. When your president reverses himself so many times in one week that you burn out your populist clutch. Triffid's Flowers, delivery is free, but you won't like it. Trumple Indulgences were for sale for a while. For a donation of two thousand of $20.16, you'll receive peace and forgiveness for having a Trump voting relative and be given 10 Hail Bidens to wash the stink away. Uh, we like to thank, technically it's a salad. We'd also like to thank Why I Oughta, Revenge Reminder Services, and It's Dead Jim, Association Termination Services. The William of Ockham Shavers Club was a very big sponsor of us for a long time. Heritage Hole, which was your personal memory revision system. And finally, not exactly Legal Zoom. So thanks to all of our fake sponsors. This was not the complete list. It's just the one I could put together in the time I had. Yeah. And not exactly Legal Zoom is, I think, who's representing the so called president of the United States Jesus. in his impeachment trial. I swear to God. I swear to God. As I have said on a, a, other podcasts this very week, his entire crime family weren't given the the criminal sense God gave a lowly Chicago alderman. Honestly. And and when you know that the judge, which is the Senate, is rigged. Right. And there's no way you're gonna go to jail. There's no way they're gonna convict you. That you can do you can show up with no pants on and write your rebuttals in poo on the wall, oh, and can, Lindsey Graham will can, still vote for you. You can have literally Dewey Cheatham and Howe with Pam Bondi as your law firm. Yeah. And it and, won't matter to the Republicans <laughs> in, in the Senate. Right. Because your they're side all traitors. Are wall, traitors. Wall, yep. bottom. Well, we're going to get a little more into that. We want to, first of all, uh, we're going to head up the show by reading some of your letters to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Because all. we love you. Um, also, yeah. I want to refer people to our Facebook page and our Twitter stream. I have left a tweet there. Our angel nerd, Tammy, is uh, still going through stuff with a majorly bad landlord. I went over to the Yelp page for her apartment complex. Yeah. And she's not making this up. No. <laughs> no, just no, no. That. She is not no. making this up. Her building is, her supervisors are pretty awful in Horrible. doing their job. From hell. Yeah. So uh, she's fighting that battle and uh, she has a request to watch some YouTube videos. You don't have to comment, subscribe, like, do anything except run them through to the end so that they get a view on YouTube. Yeah. And you get a hit uh, count. it, yeah. yeah, it just, it's crazy what she's going through. And I'm so sorry about that. But if you have a chance to leave a YouTube tab open for, you know, 20 minutes for her, we'd appreciate it. So if you would go to our Facebook page or to our Twitter stream at pro left pod, um, or you can go to mayday.proleftpod.com and all the videos will come up that she wants us to watch. And now mm -hmm. uh, on with the letters. And thank you so much to everyone for writing. Julie in San Jose has written us and she says, I will start with how much I love you guys and how grateful I am for you. This is your job, which is why I have a monthly contribution to your podcast on Patreon. Well, thank you, Julie, for that. Thank you, Julie. Maybe it is because I was born and raised in Illinois that listening to you feels <laughs> like talking with friends. <laughs> I agree with every drift glass rant and empathize with Blue Gal when she when the news just brings on the tears. Mm -hmm. I share the weekly podcast on Facebook with all my Midwest cornfield friends, hoping to spread the sanity. I like that as a phrase, spread mm -hmm. the sanity. Yeah, that's like, great. Like manure, just spread it around. Great things will yep. grow. I love that you identify as Christian, cr real Christian, able to call out the toxic fake cult that is evangelicals. We have to end the fake Christian cult and take their tax exemptions. Yeah. I agree with that. Damn right. Uh, that they use for politics. Blue Gal, you have a heart of gold, always doing good, leading by example, doing postcards, knitting, volunteering. Drift class. The first time I heard you say both sides don't, I said he gets it. Keep preaching against the Chuck Todd's Brooks media bias. Love you. Keep putting out the truth. We must make 2020 a bigger blue wave than 2018. This is true. Uh, and then Duquesne PDX writes, y'all have been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. I've only been listening for six, but your warmth and humor just grow every week. Fight the good fight and know that there are those who get a big old smile just hearing your weekly dose of sanity and caring in this, the worst of all timelines. Yeah, this is <laughs> you wanted to add that little science fiction reference pretty there. Pretty bad one, yeah. 
All right, Chris has some questions. Okay. Uh, a question for you. Bring it on, Chris. Uh, can you talk about this particularly stupid moment of policy that we are in? Uh-huh. Uh, particular attention paying to the role of conservative media bringing us to this point. And he asked me the same question, only he wants me to answer it in the context of being a mother and a patriot. And you are both of those, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Liz Cheney, it, who is the original mother and a patriot, she used that line yes. As when a she mother. pulled out of the Senate race last time. Uh-huh. Now she's not running for Senate this time either. So, uh, yeah, uh, as a mother and a patriot, I think that uh, policy-wise, the Trump presidency is simply... George W. Bush's third term with no filter. Yeah. That's my opinion. It is it is the giant undo button on the Obama administration. Right. Uh yeah. it's it it has literally it from the inauguration cake, which Trump just copied from Obama's, mm-hmm. uh, to fucking mm-hmm. crowd size. It's yep. it's been about undoing what the black guy did to make the racists happy. That's it. To this week, uh, the USDA, the Trump USDA announced that they're going to Increase the number of French fries and decrease the number of vegetables in school meals because it was Michelle Obama's idea to do it the other way around. And today's her birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Michelle, by the way. A a Chicago girl, I might add. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. So it's it's not hard to figure out. And there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on there. Chris Hayes joked last night. um, (laughs) I think it was last night saying, well, since the Senate doesn't do anything anymore other than pass judges. Um, you all have plenty of time to do a bunch of other stuff, right? And there was a mm-hmm. uh, the band laughed. I mean that that was a good joke, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. true that Mitch McConnell is in charge of killing every every attempt by anyone progressive to to do anything by strangling it to death in the Senate. And Donald Trump's in charge of giving as much money as way as possible uh, to rich people, passing as many you know adolescent crackpot judges who'll be there for fifty years as possible, and doing the bidding of Russia. And, and and destroying the State Department and destroying the Justice Department and destroying our international credibility. That's what Education he's doing. Department. Yeah. Yep. His, every person he put in charge of an agency, he put in charge to destroy that agency. That's the policy. And for 60-odd million meatheads and racists uh, who call themselves Republicans out there, that they're thrilled with that. Um, and it's going to be one hell of a tough time to fix this, which is exactly what we said 10 years ago. Um, after the Bush administration nearly destroyed the country. And what Barack Obama never counted on was while he was trying to clean up Republicans' messes, Republicans would actively sabotage everything he tried to do. That was like outside of his ability to conceive of an entire political party that was that fucking evil, so, which is why he right. should have listened to the Professional Love podcast because we were full of good advice. So, Well, and this is why – what, anyone that is shocked now that the Republican Party is party over country, I mean, wasn't they needed to go and look at 2009. Yeah. Um, okay. Doug in the Netherlands has written us and says, I love you. I love listening to your dulcet tones working their magic to keep me sane in these terrible times. I'm afraid I'm not as strong or hopeful as you and have given up on America getting its shit together to become a more perfect union. Instead of a descending empire relying on scapegoating one group after another to explain the fall of the rubes who refuse to retrain for the future and leave their expectations that they will have the same unfair advantages their daddies enshrined in society. Good point. I I have moved to the Netherlands and I'm trying to build a life. I still love and care about my country. So listening to your podcast is one of my lights in the darkness. And uh, Doug is mentioning, I, I think we've heard from some other people about this, some problems listening to us on iTunes. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's having a problem with that, let us know. We are, um, I'm aware that iTunes is switching stuff around and moving to iTunes podcasts or Apple podcasts. Yeah. Um, they don't, I think that's what's happening. I think they don't people, drop us a note every time they change their algorithm. No, they don't. And, and we've had quite a time with the uh, Science Fiction University podcast, just yeah. making sure it's on everybody's player. So uh, we have a very good uh, group of people on our side over at Buzzsprout, who are, that's our podcast hosting service. Mm-hmm. They are terrific and they give great customer service. And anytime I've had a question for them, they've been very, very helpful. So we'll, well, well and do what we can to help. And one thing, that. just as a brief little bit of sort of behind the scenes stuff, mm-hmm. um, we honestly don't know how many people listen to this podcast. No, uh, we, we don't. Have a, we, have, right. we have a rough idea, but rather than 
than using systems that calculate every hit and aggregate it. We just push this out through every medium we possibly can. Right. right. Um, so we put it out through YouTube. We put it out through Twitter. Uh, there's a, a radio um, public is is one of the means we use that doesn't count anymore, but they do have an embeddable code that works on my website. So I use them. So we have a pretty good idea how many people listen. And it's a lot. It's in, it's in the it's in the eight to 10,000 range every week and gets higher, much higher sometimes. Sometimes, but, yeah. But uh, it could be twice that. And it, we just value getting the word out over, you know, aggregating statistics and monetizing it. Right, exactly. We're not really interested in <laughs> aggregating statistics. I don't have time to do that. I want to also, while we're thanking people, thank uh, Radio Justice over at yeah. Netroots Radio. He yeah. has been a supporter of ours for a really long time. Yeah. And uh, also the people at Crooks and Liars put us up on Saturday nights for a long time. And that really gave our show a boost in the beginning. Yeah. So uh, that was thanks to Heather. Heather over at Crooks and Liars gave us a and well, And, and the broadcast. The broadcast had me on this had week. The broadcast had you on this week. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll make sure know, that do... gets over, that gets tweeted and put on our Facebook page. We too, do so. have, we do have friends out there who sort of guerrilla support us. We're not, um, respectable in, in the liberal universe. <laughs> we're not invisible uh, though either. No, but we're not invisible. That's kind of cool. And when and you, you read with this other blog, is it called blogging? Is that what she does? This person named Digby, what Digby? Yeah, is it was that with a name? Digby, someone named Digby Parton for, for those of you <laughs> oldsters out there, there was a period of about six years when, uh, uh, blogging consisted of writing what Digby said. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm with Digby Parton and I'm like, Oh my God, Digby, I can't get a signature over the phone, which is kind of a drag. Cause yeah, I wanted to sign my, graph, right. sign my hollow scan 1.0, uh, cord <laughs> dump. <laughs> no one out there will get that she joke. Will, she okay. will though. She yeah. would get that. Yes. Um, yes. It's very old school. Mm-hmm. Very old school. All right. Anyway, uh, a, a note, a quick note from Steven, and we've had coffee with Steven a couple times. Yeah. Um, Steven's a big baseball fan, and we really like yeah. him. He says, hi, Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary show. I would like both of you to know how fortunate I am to have having been able to hang out with you on occasion. I would like your listeners to know that however funny and however nice you both seem in the podcast, you are funnier and nicer in person. Really? Oh, I don't think oh. that's true. We're much funnier and nicer on the podcast than we yes. are in real life. Yes. Stephen. <laughs> Keep up the good work and correct. Congratulations on the 10th anniversary. May you have many more. And then we have a note from a very old friend of the podcast uh, from way back. Andy in England wrote us. Hey, Andy. Andy Man. sent us a baby picture of one yeah. of his uh, relatives in kitty pajamas that young lady is now you know a middle schooler or whatever and the kids, uh, the kids are growing up blue gal they're the growing, kids are growing up. up yeah yeah and uh Flo is her name so hello to Flo. and hey Flo. uh <laughs> yes andy in england uh sent that to us that was one of our very first internet kitties yeah. was the, the kitty pajamas the baby in the kitty pajamas uh but andy wrote us his history of listening to the show and i really love this letter a long long time ago in 2011 i was in great pain due to a back problem virtually immobile unable to work and feeling very sorry for myself i was flicking through this new world of podcasts that i now found i had time to listen to when i came across bg plus dg i must admit i can't remember the first episode that got me caught but i could sense that they had something that the other and now long forgotten podcast did not (laughs) Humor, that's how we spell it over here, H-U-M-O-U-R. Yeah, yeah. Knowledge, insight, history, combined with a healthy dose of swearing, made for a considerable combination that got me hooked pretty quick. Though I doubt I will ever forgive you both for introducing me to Louis Gomer. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We're, we apologize for Louis Gomer. We, do. we really do. We do. I now await the admission of the never Trumpers that you two were right years before they were, and that David Brooks will then pen a mea culpa and beg your forgiveness. If I believed in hell, then I would be waiting for it to freeze over. (laughs) Congratulations on the anniversary. Long may the last of the podcasters endure. Andy in England, formerly part of Europe. (laughs) Yeah. Poor Andy. We are so so in mourning over that and, and suffering through all of that Although, with you. Whatever you're smoking, yeah. Andy, just send it this way because that whole 
Never Trumpers <laughs> on the road to Damascus realizing yeah, the left was yeah, right. Yeah. I like where you're going we, with that. We like where you're going with that. Uh-huh. We really do. Uh, this is a comment on last week's show from Peggy in Kansas. Uh, we were talking about Kansas Governor Laura Kelly uh-huh. being able uh, to get Medicaid expansion yes, done finally, in Kansas. Finally, finally. So Peggy in Kansas wrote us about that. Mm. And she said, hi, Kansan here. I'd like to remind you that Kansas Governor Laura Kelly was a state senator when she ran against Chris Kobach in 2018 for governor and beat him. There are two women running in the primary for U.S. Senate, Usha Reddy, mayor of Manhattan, Kansas, and the favored candidate, State Senator Barbara Bollier. Barbara is a former moderate Republican who switched parties when it got crazy. She is my senator representing the inner ring Kansas side suburbs of Kansas City, and she is very well liked, including by this flaming liberal. And she's probably even better known than Kelly was in 2018. She raised $1.1 million in the last quarter of 2019, which I think I saw is more than any Democrat has in the history of Kansas. That's really respect. Yeah, that's, that's very yeah. good. Yeah. The last time Kansas sent a Democrat to the Senate is something like 80 years ago. Mm-hmm. I like our chances. She is an MD, she is pro-choice, and she has made schools and health care her priorities. One thing that isn't mentioned much in the Medicaid expansion conversation in national media is that many, many rural hospitals in Kansas have closed. Yes, they have. These might have been saved if expansion had happened earlier. Yes, indeed. This is problematic both because rural voters who trend older have to travel farther for medical care. Mm-hmm. And because the hospital is often the biggest employer in rural areas, it is a job issue as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me about postcards for voters. I wrote postcards in the last election, but I didn't realize they are still active. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Postcardsforvoters.org. I highly recommend you making sure you're uh, wired into them because it's important to do that. Congratulations on 10 years. I look forward to listening to you both for many years to come. Thank you. Peggy, that's the kind of letter I love getting is what's going on on the ground yeah. where you are politically and who are you working for and how are you uh, contributing, I think, is it making a difference, making sure that Democrats get some kind of lift from your activity. And uh, I will share those letters anytime. If, you, if you're working for a candidate, if you're working on some local campaign, mm-hmm. I love letters <laughs> like that. And Drift Glass will tell you, oh, look, I got this. We have to read this on the air. Mm-hmm. So. By all means, let us know this election year how you're doing and what what you're working for. Well, and, and we we and by we I mean I uh, make, <laughs> make sport of and mock and and complain a little bit about the large liberal podcast networks that sort of fly over our heads. <laughs> you bitch about them a lot I, more I than I do. I I, don't, I ignore I, that. But here, but here's the thing: they both are on my team, and they yep. both. I'm thinking of uh, of Stephanie Miller's uh, sexy liberal and the uh, Pod Save America boys. Mostly right. boys. They do a lot of fundraising and heavy lifting and supporting for voter registration, fighting right. voter suppression, raising money for Democratic candidates. And they're and they're, they're, that's, it's more than we can do, really. They're on the it, side it, of the it, angels. I have no yep. argument with them on, on, on those, applaud, those. We applaud them for that at all. Yeah. I just I yeah. really do wish there'd be more focus. Speaking of Kansas on the Midwest, um, yeah. there is this yeah. big part of the country that is just being utterly ignored by people who who are on my team and i'm like guys there are people here out here who can help you who can actually talk to the people who live here and speak their language and let help you understand how to reach them um mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we'd love to do that so that's that's all i have to say about that uh jilly bean wrote us and said i don't know why but for some reason after listening to your episode this week <laughs> for the first time since the no- 2016 november surprise I felt a glimpse of hope and optimism, almost the way that on an overcast day, you can sense more than see the sun starting to push through. Oh. It's still a nail biter, but we'll keep our fingers crossed that the clouds are starting to break. And I said that to you earlier today, you did. didn't I? You did. That, you know, it feels like uh, something. I, I don't want to say I don't want to say blood in the water because no. that's that's a violent thing to say i don't mean it that way but a subtle tectonic shift like you can just feel the earth move a little bit well and it feels like you know cnn got attacked by a republican senator in a totally craven way to raise money yeah a a staged fundraising way yeah yeah it was it was totally stupid but um 
it it almost was like okay you know gloves are off now you know we're not going to take your bullshit anymore and i last night they did a lot about donald trump not knowing people and they actually remembered the past they cnn yeah, yeah. actually went to their archives finally <laughs> And said, look, this is something Donald Trump says all the time. And I and the hostess said, look, I can come up with 14 more of these clips where Donald Trump said he didn't know a guy and there are pictures of yeah. him knowing the guy, well, I, you I, know, or talking about On him. that subject, Jay Rosen mentioned uh, on the Twitter today uh, a mm -hmm. subtle thing. Again, these are subtle things that 20th century Fox uh, entertainment is like no longer using the same logo as Fox News. They're like, they're like, no, we, we want to make really sure that the people who go to our movies and our theme parks and buy our whatever know that we're not associated with the crackpot lunatics who, mm -hmm. who are who mm -hmm. ba uh, basically a cash cow, but that we're not the same brand anymore. And again, it's not a big thing, but it, there is this effort to walk gently back away from the lunatics. Yeah. And well, and the racist, I think yeah. I think as it becomes more and more clear, you know, I think uh, Nancy Pelosi did a really good job oh, picking yeah. Yeah. a rainbow for their impeachment managers mm -hmm. and making sure that that representation mattered. And uh, the more this election year progresses uh -huh. and we see that, look, there's one side that is doing the white male thing, white male supremacy thing. Mm -hmm. And there is one side that is saying, no, America is a pluralistic society where everyone has a right to succeed. And those two different, that difference can't be more stark than it is right now with Donald and Trump. And that's the, that's the vote. That's what you're voting for. Yeah, you're that's, that's what you're other. voting for. And, yep. and within the right, it's a monolith. There is one Ein Reich, Ein Volk, Ein Trump. You know, there's only right. one way to do things, and it's our way. Our side is messier because there's a whole bunch of people who all sort of agree more or less on what we should be getting towards and a lot of disagreement about how to get there and how fast to go and what's practical and what's not, all of which is fair. That's all politics. But the, the existential difference could not be more stark. One more letter, and then I want to hold on to that thought. I want to get back to that. Okay. Uh, Lee writes, happy anniversary, guys. I hope the next 10 years will be slightly less interesting. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do a podcast cooking show where you can't see the ingredients. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but no matter what the future brings, I think you two together will find a way to give us fans funny, insightful, and memorable takes. I'll be pulling up a chair to listen to all of it. Oh, thank you, Lee. We appreciate that so much. Thanks, Lee. Uh, yeah, I want to get back to that thought of how messy things are yeah. in the Democratic Party. Yeah. Let's start with the debate sure. and get and and the messiness. Um, I was was writing notes on this and kind of wishing that we could take a little tiny dose of Grover Norquist pill in the Democratic Party, <laughs> just a little bit, just a, little a bit. tincture, not not the tax tincture. part, right? Not the tax part, <laughs> but a pledge. no, not the tax part, not the total white asshole part. No. But the part where you said, look, we we don't need a president who meets all of our needs. We need a president who will sign the bills. Right. Yes. And the fact is you're going to have AOC and the squad and a whole bunch of progressive women, yes. frankly, thank God, in the House yep. coming up with 400 bills that Nancy Pelosi gets through the House. God willing, we have a Democratic Senate that passes those as well. What you need is a president who's willing to sign what comes out of that process. Right. Which means sad face we've eliminated tulsi gabbard and john delaney womp, womp. Womp, oh no <laughs> yeah you know i mean we're not gonna have a president john delaney no. because no. no uh but i don't think bernie is sexist and i don't think elizabeth warren is uh a snake no <laughs> and i think either one of them would sign the bill that the other person had ushered through the senate yeah you know that's the thing we will be very fortunate as progressives to get either one of those people yes. as the nominee yes we would be that would be great <laughs> can we have one of those two can yeah I could one we of those two one of those two yeah. i'm not expecting that we're going to get either no, one of those two I, I we i have been very disappointed in the past in primary races mm -hmm. barack obama was my fifth choice in in 2008 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i've made mistakes in choosing certain horses to ride upon i never have i've always the picked past. the winner every single time never been disappointed <laughs> in my entire life and <laughs> so those of you that are going through your first primary race as my kids are uh -huh. you know 
uh, be prepared to have your heart broken. Yes. It is that is the primary process is you you wind up with a candidate that you can hopefully get behind. And uh, one of the problems in 2016 is we were cocky and thought that, oh, yeah, you know, 92 percent chances she's going to win. Sure. She's going to win. Sure. We can treat her like shit, right. and right. That's the thing. That's uh, she's the still going to win, and she'll die for our sins, right? That's you the point. say that. It's a, she was the pinata that everyone in the media could beat on. And everyone, a lot of people, everyone everywhere, not just the media. I, well, uh, you know, as I was saying, yeah. everyone in the media and a whole bunch of people in the Democratic Party who want right. to prove their purity and how 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 starched and white their their underwear was could beat on mm-hmm. her, and and right. know that some other responsible group of people would elect her. And let them be right. purity angels and never have to taint themselves. And that didn't right. work out so well. Now, I understand that if you were a true rock-ribbed, uh, far-left Bolshevik, um, then moderates are your enemies. Right. Because, and, and you didn't vote for Obama right. either. If, if, if that's how far back you go, you, I understand that's your position. If you're right. a radical, and I, I mean that quite literally and sincerely – Moderates mm-hmm. are the worst things in the world because moderates right. keep you from your revolution because you believe the only thing that will solve all of our problems is a one shot, huge, massive upheaval, you know, heads chopped, mm-hmm. all out revolution, period. And anything short of mm-hmm. that is treasonous. And there are people who believe that. And I understand that. Yeah, right. I don't right. believe that. So you're not going to ever get me on on that that tip. Most people, however, have a somewhat more. um small d democratic view of how politics should work and that Mm -hmm. system is fucking broken because way too many people jumped on hillary clinton and bashed her and again i'm running full circle now should have learned their lesson by now that there no one's interests are served if we all keep knifing each other over handshakes yeah (laughs) you know over handshakes or not handshakes right right uh so that's about all i have to say about that well, I, uh, vote for who you like. Yeah. Uh, in your primary, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, depending on who's still there and, you know, we're, we don't vote till April, so right. there's going to be dropouts in between. It'll be over times. by the time it gets here. Um, yeah. I would like to say, since I was required to watch the goddamn debate because I was on the radio, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, yeah. I do have a few things to, to mention. First of all, it was very bad storytelling. Um, it yeah. was like the last season of Lost. It was like a show that got scheduled that no one could actually justify. Why are we doing this? But we have the time and it's open, so we're going to do it. Um, I couldn't figure out who the audience for this was, except I think Amy Klobuchar figured it out. The The, the audience for this debate was Iowa farmers. Yeah. And everyone yeah, else. It was in Iowa and it was scheduled way ahead yeah. of time to be in Iowa three weeks before the the caucuses and, and she so. was she was very smart about it she talked about iowa farmers yeah. she talked about stuff that interests them and she talked about her dad and long-term health care which i have a you know very in, deep interest in because that's something my mom had very briefly um went through very briefly and so she was talking about really practical stuff that people who probably were watching this debate in iowa would be interested in but it was this was for fans this was a fan service thing um mm-hmm. i thought mm-hmm. that somebody Everybody missed a chance to stick it to Joe Biden because Joe Biden sat there and said, the reason I voted for the Iraq war, I didn't vote for the Iraq war. I voted to give George Bush the flexibility to negotiate, blah, 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 blah. Never thought he'd take us to war. The Republicans duped me. They lied to me. I agree. It was a huge mistake giving them that flexibility, et cetera. At that point, someone should have piped up, said, well, Joe, isn't your whole line that once I'm elected, Republicans will work with me and I can trust them. And right, can, uh, right. It's a logical question to ask. And nobody yep. asked it. And, and that kind of bothers yep. me because I think they were more interested in protecting their little piles of gold, you know, not not making too big a mistake, not too much, um, not too much rancor. And maybe that was a mistake. Maybe it's not. Maybe Iowa doesn't matter. Uh, I thought it was a huge mistake. You brought this up when we chatted that no one took the opportunity to throw the whole question of how do you pay for health care? Uh, back in the moderators' faces and say, well, how the mm-hmm. fuck did you pay for the Iraq war, Wolf Blitzer? Right. How the hell did you pay for Bush's tax cuts and Trump's tax cuts? Nobody ever you know, harped on those questions. So you know what? Mexico's going to pay for it. Fuck you. Next question. That's the proper answer. Well, and to let's these. talk about how much money CNN made off the Iraq oh, God, war, yeah. too. So, yeah. you know, well, this is the thing. Yeah. And, they make and, money off of wars. 
And they do. yeah, yep. Well, and, and last but not least, I hate debates anyway because no one ever asks the question I want answered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which is, mm -hmm. nobody ever seizes the microphone and says, you know what? The real threat to this country is the Republican Party, the whole Republican Party. Until they are curb stomped, we are all screwed. And by the way, they would never have been able to screw this country up as badly without you assholes in the media helping them every goddamn step of the way. With I'm both, waiting. With both siderism. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for someone to put their, their finger right in Wolf Blitzer's chest and say, you did this to us. You sons of bitches at CNN did this to us. You're the people who hired Corey fucking Lewandowski and then wonder why people don't trust the media. Right. And that's And a you moment. enable white nationalism every time you do it. Yep. I wait for that moment and it never comes. So debates are always kind of disappointing for me. Kind of disappointing. Yeah. All right. Let's get to what do you want to talk about first uh, with Trump? <laughs> I, I went, well, you know what? I want. I went through our archives. Yeah. And I went back to 2017 and where we were, we had a thing where we tried to reiterate over and over again, that there are only six basic stories that encompass the entire Trump administration. Right. And right. I thought, man, everything has changed and nothing has changed. Yep. yep. Um, and th so there's only six basic stories. One of them is the first one. We can do this alternately if you like. Sure. Go right ahead. The first one is the Trump care disaster. That's the fake Trump uh, health care program remains alive because Republicans promised to deliver hundreds of billions of dollars in tax cuts to their paymasters. Mm -hmm. Story number two. Story number two, Vladimir Putin massively interfered with the American presidential election on behalf of Donald Trump and his cronies. Story number three, Donald Trump and his cronies are the wholly owned stooges of Vladimir Putin. Number four, Donald Trump and his cronies cannot stop lying about everything all the time. And number five, the party of Trump is so desperate to win at something they're willing to look the other way as Vladimir Putin's stooges in the White House wreck the government and lie incessantly about everything. And finally, number six, the base of the party of Trump is either too fucked in the head stupid. Now, you notice Drift Glass wrote yes. this, right? Everybody's got yes. that. that. That's not my that's word. My, that's that's my style word. right there. <laughs> too fucked in the head stupid or too in love with the idea of being a foot soldier in an American fascist party to care about the first five stories. Yep. And you definitely saw that this week oh God, yeah. when yeah. the GAO came out and said, yep, here's the law Donald Trump broke. Yeah. You looking for the crime? Here's the crime. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, all of the people who, on Twitter who were screaming, what crime, what crime, were now saying, so, so what? So what, so what, yeah. And this was the week, because uh, this, this was an insane week. Of all the insane, mm -hmm. this is a, oh, yeah. this is a week that Lev Parnas dropped an entire payload of smoking guns in the White House lawn, and and nothing changes. Nothing changes. Right. I mean, well, and you and I said this to each other. I said, you know, in a normal world, in a normal timeline, mm -hmm. where we had a healthy democracy, the Republican head of the Senate. The, after the first six minutes of the Lev Parnas yeah. interview would be marching up to the White House and saying, you got to yeah. resign. Well, after the Mueller you report, go. you've, been, you've been up there going, you got yeah. it. You yeah. tell me if there's any, I will defend you on one thing, but man, if there's anything else, oh no, man, this is it was just crazy. It was a crazy weekend. I got drunk. It was fine. No, this is, this is episode 500. And, and, right. and right. back in the Goldwater days on chapter two, he would have been up to the right. top and no, you got to go, man. Got to go. We can't, we just can't live with you. You, you got to go. And when you think of how fast Obama got rid of Shirley Sherrod oh, yeah. over nothing. Yeah, and, and Van Jones, just a head fake, a head yeah, fake just from a fake video dumb. dump site. Um, boom, yep. gone because yep. we don't want to make anybody mad. And I understand why. Because Well, and we don't, and we want to have zero indictments. Right. I want a clean administration with zero. And there's a whole bunch of shit. So I'm going to have, there's that. a whole bunch of yeah. shit on fire everywhere. And we've, and we don't have time to litigate this stuff. So fine, take her. Yep. Fine, take him. We're, we're, there's a big fire over here we have to put out, and we can't take a lot of time arguing about this shit. What he never realized was giving them um, pelts, letting them score right. points. Scalps. All right. that did right. was make them want more. All it did was make them hungrier. You have to destroy them. You have to absolutely destroy them. And again, in, in any other timeline, uh, Lev Parnas... Uh, uh, would have turned uh, the, on that '70s show. There's that moment where where Red Foreman, um, mm -hmm. you know, he gets the chance. Typical angry suburban Republican dad who served in Korea, who killed people in Korea, uh, gets the chance to ask Jerry Ford a question. 
and mm-hmm. and, every, and the mm-hmm. whole chamber of commerce is like, here's the softball question. Here's the thing you should do. And finally, Red just gets up and says, Jerry, how the hell could you pardon Nixon? Because that's mm-hmm. what an actual mm-hmm. patriotic fucking Republican would have wanted to know in 1970, 1974, right. 1975. Right. That's right. what he wanted. Because it's an embarrassment that you did that. How the hell could you pardon mm-hmm. Nixon? Those guys are gone. Those guys have been gone for 40 years. Now it's just a bunch of Mitch McConnell's and uh, and Matt Gates's and Stooges in between. Nothing left of that party. It's all got to go. So that's why the six basic stories never change. Because right. we right. know who's pulling the strings. We know what a bunch of sock puppet criminals the Republican leadership are for Russia. And we know that the base of the party are brain dead, are zombies, and will believe anything. They're never going to hear from Lev Parnas. They're never going to believe anything. They're going to shout both sides do it and run down a rat hole. But, you know, that's that's why we do this podcast, to remind you that lots of things do change, but the battle goes on. This is the, this is the way things are. And, and you did have the suggestion of why don't Democrats recruit Stormy yes. Daniels? She's not, she's not an attorney, I so I don't know if she would have care. the standing to uh, represent you know, standing next, standing next to Adam Schiff. I don't think that's going to work out. Hey, Ken well. Starr's not an attorney either. So, oh, yeah, wow. no, he, I wow. mean, yeah. I mean, Ken Starr and yeah. Alan Dershowitz. Ken Starr. Uh, Can you fucking it, well, believe Well, yeah, it? absolutely. And as I said, there is now a non-trivial chance that President Stupid will end up in a cell somewhere where both the surveillance mm-hmm. cameras fail and the guards have sudden onset narcolepsy. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> These things things happen when you hire Dershowitz and Starr as your legal representation. But it's a circus. So one sad. side wants to have a trial. One side wants to have a circus. And yep. I yep. I say, why can't we do both? Why can't we bring? Why can't we? Why do can't both? we bring yep. in um, Stormy Daniels as a special guest star? As long as this is a freak show. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Mr. Hyde. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hyde has a video on Twitter that he put he out did. there he did himself. It, he did it all by himself. He thought it was a good idea. Yeah. This is me. <laughs> I'm running for Congress in Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, I pointed out to you before we started recording that, uh, you know, back in back in the golden days of 2018, we thought Sam Nunberg was an embarrassing drunk. Yeah, yeah. And we thought Paul Manafort was a uh, clever mobster. Yeah. Well, now that now that Sam Nunberg is what a respected MSNBC contributor, I guess, <laughs> or CNN, I, guess that, I don't know which yeah. one. Yeah, he gets around. He gets around. No, the, the, and and Mr. Hyde is the is as I mentioned today the, the American Rob Ford we never knew we needed, never knew yeah. we needed, or and we don't deserve. Yes, we don't I, deserve him. He's the hero we we don't deserve. We don't deserve. But, keep keep making videos, Mr. Hyde. We want to hear more from you. Stay golden, pony boy. It's so sad. This is American politics, people. Yes. I don't know what to say anymore. Well, I woke up this morning and yeah. I cracked open my uh, my computer to see that Newt Gingrich, Ken Starr, and David Brooks were all trending. Oh, and you and said, I, is it I hit Christmas? My head, <laughs> I hit my head very hard on the floor several times going, yeah. is it 1995? Did I just yeah. dream the last yeah. 15 years? Is it really 1990? Oh, no, it's not. It's 2020. And and there there goes the the rustic and adorable theory that history will eventually oh. uh, reach out a righteous hand and 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 make conservatives pay for the shit they've done. No, not only that, drift class, but the Florida Supreme Court decided that there should be a poll tax. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're yeah, not it's running back fast enough. You know? yeah. Eighteen twenty. Oh, what's Eighteen twenty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's we're not we're not regressing fast enough. Um, Seriously. and we're, we're all, all, all of us are on different timelines. So there are people out there who think having new Gingrich and Ken Starr and on the set, uh, trending today is a great thing and think David Brooks is a freaking genius. And by the way, today, Matt Dowd got up on his high horse and said, you know, false balance is just the worst possible thing. People <laughs> who do false equivalency should not be given a media platform. I'm Matthew Dowd. I dare you to take me on. And I said like, hey, I take you on, man, but you blocked me for saying exactly that. During right. the last Three presidential election, Three literally those things yep. I told you those things, and you blocked me and called me stupid for saying that. You so call, okay, you, he called your readers stupid, he not did. not he interested did. in the truth. Right. Yes. Right. Oh, it's just it was. We had an actual public spat, and now he's like, people who do false equivalency, why they shouldn't be given a media platform? That's just crazy. So I I've, I've learned my lesson. Next yeah. timeline, Blue Cal, I start off as a right wing thug, like Rick Wilson. 
I spend, I make a whole lot of money uh, shitting all over Democrats. And then in the last possible minute, I discover, hey, the Republican Party is full of Republicans. Can I have a book contract? And I will get a book contract. And apparently MSNBC is now just the Rick Wilson network with guest stars, Nicole Wallace and Joe Scarborough and Ari Melber. Honestly, Melbourne. the Joe Scarborough show is the Rick Wilson show this week. Yeah. Yes, it is. He's oh. everywhere. And, and I thought I could escape by flipping over to CNN, but no, there he is too. So I've learned my lesson. And I now know what it will take to bring down the Republican Party. The news? Trump denied knowing Parnas and hand waved away a photo of himself with Parnas as just one of thousands he's taken with his supporters. Yeah. Since then, dozens more photos of Parnas with Trump <laughs> and videos of Parnas with Trump and dinners with Parnas with Trump. And everyone in Trump's circle have been surfacing. Uh, Rudy Giuliani requested a private meeting with President Zelensky, then the president-elect of Ukraine, with Trump's, quote, knowledge and consent, according to newly re released documents by House Democrats. The Government Accountability Office has determined that the Trump administration violated the law, yes, when it froze military aid to Ukraine. That's it. That, that's the crime. The Russian military has hacked into the Ukrainian gas company at the center of the Trump impeachment inquiry using similar tactics to those they used to obtain emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign and the DNC. Trump is preparing to loot another $7.2 billion from the Pentagon to pay for his stupid border wall this year, five times the amount that Congress authorized for the project in the 2020 budget. And that is something to point out about the GAO. This is not the first time that the GAO has said that the Trump administration violated the law. They've done this yeah. twice before, both about wall funding. And so uh, it's just that the GAO can say, yes, they violated the law. That that has no teeth. Yeah. So unless the Congress decides to impeach him over it, which right. is and the point, right? That, that the, the cops in the courts are the Congress, and the Congress right. is not, are in the hand of criminals right now. So yep. Half the Congress, what, the Senate, is in the hand yeah. of the Republicans, right? Uh, Defense Secretary Mark Esper, quote, didn't see intelligence backing up Donald Trump's claim that Iran was planning to strike one or four or maybe a thousand U.S. embassies. Other senior administration officials declined to confirm Trump's assertion that Iran was, quote, looking to blow up for U.S. embassies because he's lying. The latest Justice Department investigation into Hillary Clinton's business dealings has ended with no criminal charges. Womp womp. So that means they're going to launch another one. You just know they will. They're just going to keep doing it and doing it until until the until the clock runs out. Uh, Donald Trump's 2017 tax cuts are being investigated by the Treasury Department. The Opportunity Zone tax break, which was meant to help poor communities by encouraging investment in new housing, businesses, and jobs. Instead, money that was eligible for tax breaks has been used to fund luxury development projects in wealthy neighborhoods, including projects by friends of Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and members of the Kushner family. Yeah. Somehow, low-income housing became uh, yacht parking places, you know. Yeah. Just so. magically. Just ma And that benefits Trump's cronies. Just magically. CNN has paid a record fine for union busting. The $76 million settlement ends a 15-year battle with the cable news giant. That's some good news right there. That's yep. some real good news. The Trump, as we mentioned, USDA proposes cutting school menus that allow more fries and fewer vegetables to screw Michelle Obama. On her birthday. On her birthday. Trump's jaw-dropping tirade against generals. This book that's come out and is getting all kinds of exclusive excerpts in the Washington Post because Washington Post writers wrote it. Uh, and is, no, by the way, this this book, Stable Genius, is number one among, not not books on impeachment, not political books, books. Yeah, books. <laughs> And it's being released on the 21st of January, so you can only get it by pre-order, and it is number one in books. <laughs> so this one's going to sell a lot. Uh, this book revealed uh, that Donald Trump told generals at the Pentagon, you're a bunch of dopes and babies and losers. <laughs> he did this three years ago in front of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. And no one reported on it. No one resigned. No one held a press conference saying the president is crazy. Yeah, they just didn't. 
you know, shrug. You know, well, you know, well he's commander in chief. I guess he's allowed to say he doesn't want to hold a war with us because we're just his generals. Uh, apparently, they tried to sort of very slowly in baby talk walk him through how things worked. And yeah, he, just he didn't lost like his that. Shit. Yeah, he started did. screaming at people because he's yep. the president now. I'm president now. I don't have to listen to nobody no more. I'm president. And that's just what you want uh, in a leader of a country, a complex, uh, mature democracy with nuclear weapons. That's exactly what you want. Um, there's some local news that's interesting that I think I, I might want to share with people. Uh, former congressman and uh, uh, lifelong politician Ray LaHood. Retired. Let's be clear. He's, he he was retired. a transportation secretary under who? Bush or Bush one or Reagan uh, or who? Somebody. I think it was, well, I, yeah, it might've been Barack, uh, Barack Obama. Yeah, Ray LaHood. He was yeah. transportation secretary for a while, and he was also a congressman for many, many years, Republican mm -hmm. congressman yep. from Illinois. Well, and he was, he's retired uh, and so forth. He's he's well retired, and he has said, you know, he probably will he probably he's not gonna vote for Trump because Trump's just crazy. Um he said he'd probably leave the presidential uh race uh, ballot blank because there's a couple of no names running against Donald Trump. Quote, Trump has pretty much turned the Republican Party into the Trump Party, LaHood said, forgetting that. They've always been awful, shitty people. He mm -hmm. said it would never go back to being the party of Ronald Reagan or George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush. Quote, but when Trump is gone, we'll go back to some semblance of the Republican Party that I grew up in, that Bob Michael grew up in, that Ronald Reagan really helped continue as well as, as, well as the Bushes. So he's a retired Republican. He has no memory of his party being a shithole for the last 30 years. He's, but he really believes that Trump fucked it up. So he might vote for Biden. He just might do that. Uh, he might. He's, he says he's not pledging to vote for any Democrat who runs against Trump in the fall. I don't know if I can bring myself to vote for someone like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. He said, they're too far left for me. But he's troubled. He's troubled. Now, what makes this so hilarious is his son is the congressman from the district, right, right. right next to ours, who loves Donald Trump. Who's the Trump um, Illinois uh, honorary chair for for Trump for Illinois? Trump, tw Illinois, yeah. Who thinks Donald Trump's doing a bang up job? This is but he's exactly in Congress right now as a Republican, so right. you know he he doesn't have a choice apparently. Well, he, he could do the honorable thing, but All honorable his... things don't yeah. come uh, to these people. These people have no honor. They're well, Republicans. This made this made he headline news page one above the fold. Ray LaHood will not vote for Trump. That was yep. page one story. And I think that does show more leadership than mm -hmm. anyone in Congress, any Republican co in Congress has. Granted, he's out of Congress and not yes. there, but it does give those Republicans in the in the farm belt reason to stay home, frankly, yeah. in November. Yeah. Well, if it's and, and Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, you know, and, that's all, and he doesn't want to vote for that. All I right. want. And, and you can you can really see this in a in a in a encapsulated form. This is Illinois politics. Illinois right. politics is very dynastic. Fathers yep. and sons and grandsons. It goes it, it, and it from Chicago, in Chicago all the way down to way down the river. Yep. yep. As I've it, said, if people want to understand Illinois politics, buy a copy of Boss by Mike Roy. Go from 1970 and just update the names because they're all the same. All the families. names are the last names are the same. Yeah. 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 So you have the LaHood family. The, the patrofamilias of the Hood family going, I can't vote for Trump. He's a lunatic. I love my son. He's in Congress. I think he's doing a great job, but I cannot vote for Trump. And his son, who's a total Trump guy, 100% backed him up. That's the generational divide you find right across Illinois Republican politics. You do. The, you absolutely the people, do. The people yeah. who voted for Jim Edgar or Jim mm -hmm. Thompson are right. just fucking horrified, but they can't right. do anything about it because they're lifelong, sworn-in-blood Republicans. And occasionally one of them will step out from behind the shadows and go, you know, it's just it's just too much. But their their sons and their daughters are pledged to the party, man. They're, they're, but they're... here's the deal. Here's the mm -hmm. deal. If enough of the old guys stay home exactly. in November, exactly. that is very bad news for Rodney Davis. It is. All you got to do, all you got to do, a few hundred of these guys stay home. A few hundred yeah. old farmers, old Rayla Hood friends going, say, guys. No, I can't bring myself to vote for Donald Trump, so I I'm going to stay home. I can't vote for the crazy socialist, but I cannot. I'll go vote for my son. And that's what I'm worried about, that they'll just skip the top of the ticket. But yeah. you know what? Stay home. Relax. 
Don't worry about it. Put your feet up. Put your feet up. Watch, you know, watch MacGyver. You never like the tweeting anyway. No. So, you know. Stay home. Stay home. And and that's a that's a real thing. That's a real powerful yeah. thing happening here in Illinois is the generational yeah. divide between the people who served under honorable Republican governors who had well, the balanced budgets. People who served in Vietnam. People who yeah. served in yeah. Korea. Yeah. And realize that Donald Trump's treating the military like shit. Yep. It, and then you have people who are too young to have served in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. who are our age, 50 and above, yes. but not 70, 80, who are saying, oh, yeah, Trump, great, Trump, great. Well, you know, it doesn't matter to them that Donald Trump almost got us into war with Iran. No, you know, they, they don't, don't care. They're, not, they're too old to go to war now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to see a few of the senior Republicans, just enough, mm-hmm. just say, well, I don't like, I don't like, the guy at the head of the ticket, and I'm staying home. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week, we have two internet kitties. These inter- this week's internet kitties are Scout and Luna. Scout has been an internet kitty before, but recently, Scout welcomed Luna into the household. Ooh. And Luna is a black kitty who looks very much like our black kitties. She's got a little white dot on the front of her neck. Um, uh, And Scout and Luna appear to get along pretty well. I have been informed that Scout and Luna do not sit on the kitchen floor and demand their freshly poured cat food. They stalk, circle, and sing for their freshly poured cat food. Yes, yes. Freshly poured cat food is our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sing, stalk, circle, or sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured freshly poured freshly poured oh my lord it's freshly poured and you can visit scout and welcome luna into the uh diadem of internet kitties (laughs) (laughs) at our facebook page and website you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address proleftpodcast at gmail.com or you can also write to both of us Feel free to write to us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go Postal Unions, letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Now I've got to find the last page of my notes. (laughs) Because I'm a professional here. Hold on a minute. There you go. All right. I got it. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal, postal address information, Patreon. We now have a birthday GoFundMe complete with a birthday cake celebrating our 10th year. Yay! Uh, All of that is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show this week and let everyone know that you're celebrating with us our 10-year anniversary as a podcast, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the stalwart friend of the podcast, Batochio, Reminds us that 10 years is like 56 in Internet Kitty years. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions. What I told Brad in the Bradcast is that if, yeah. because he was all freaked out because it was impeachment plus debate plus, oh God, just, I hope you're all agile enough to handle the fact that it's just a crazy news day. I said, man, if I can't bullshit for an hour. Yeah, you and Digby are not agile. No. <laughs> If I can't bullshit for an hour, then I should be, should not be in the podcast business. So that's true. Yeah.